Hey, how's it going? So when the Nord Stream pipelines were destroyed, I mean, a few idiots said that, oh, the Russians did it. Yeah, the Russians would blow up their own pipeline, right? And, but the more sensible people, uh, such as myself, immediately said, the Americans did it, of course. But there has been a very interesting article, I mean, extremely important article, published by Seymour Hirsch. Now, Seymour Hirsch, for those of you who don't know, is an American journalist who's been around since donkey's years. He came to prominence in 69 uh, or 1970 over the My Lay Massacre. He was the one who revealed the My Lay Massacre, where uh, um, a platoon of, I believe it was Marines, uh, headed by uh, Lieutenant Callie, uh, killed an entire village of Vietnamese uh, peasants. Mm -hmm. And he has gone from, you know, one big story to the next. Uh, uh, he revealed the clandestine bombing of Cambodia during the Vietnam War, and, and he's gone on, and, and basically he is a journalist, an old-school journalist. He digs deep, he's got impeccable sources, and uh, of his major stories, none of them have ever been proven to be false in any of the relevant details. And he came out with a story yesterday on his Substack that has gotten a lot of media attention because he says that, for a fact, that the Nord Stream pipeline bombings were carried out by the United States. He's confirming what most sensible people who are observing this conflict realize from the get-go, but it's more than the confirmation. He's putting in some very, very key details into who ordered this and who carried it out and, and how it was actually done. It's a fascinating read. I suggest you go check it out. But for purposes of this video that I'm doing for you, the relevant details are twofold. Number one, the driving force for the destruction of the Nord Stream pipeline was Joe Biden, of all people. Joe Biden wanted the destruction of the Nord Stream pipelines. He was the one who pushed it forward. And his acolytes, his, um, you know, his, 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 the people who did it, who carried it forward, were National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan, Secretary of State Anthony Blinken, and Under Secretary of State Victoria Newland. They were the ones who did it. Apparently, Jake Sullivan was the point man for this particular operation, which, interestingly enough, according to Seymour Hersh's reporting, used former uh, Special Forces operatives to actually put the bombs in place so as to elude the law that requires the U.S. Congress to be informed of any clandestine activity since these were retired and former uh, uh, officers, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, personnel, they weren't required to inform Congress, which is like a legalistic workaround and really despicable, but that's not important. The important thing is who ordered it, and it was Joe Biden who really wanted this. And what's important is when they ordered it. Joe Biden and his little coterie approved this plan in the fall of 2021. Now, this is crucial. It's crucial because of the following reasons. Number one, in the fall of 2021, the administration had already made it to its mind that it was going to provoke Russia into a war. That was the only reason to go ahead with this kind of uh, terrorist activity. And make no mistake, Destroying the Nord Stream pipelines was terrorism. State-funded, state-directed terrorism. The thing that the United States accuses everybody else of doing, they did it. The Americans. And for them to say that, oh, you know, law and justice and... Fuck you, man. They are terrorists. They carried this out. And they did it in the fall of 2021. They gave the order in the fall of 2021 because they were egging on the Russians into a war. Nothing that the Russians would have done, could have done, would have prevented this escalation and the increasing provocations that eventually led to the Russians carrying out the invasion of Ukraine. Okay? And that's the first item. The second item. The only people that this really hurts is the Germans. 
With Seymour Hersh's revelations, nobody in Germany can now state that they are ignorant as to who carried out this attack. Seymour Hersh's reputation and the fact that he's at the end of his life because he's an elderly gentleman, I do believe he's something like uh, 85 years old. So he's old enough that he doesn't give a shit, okay? He's doing it for a love of the craft, if you will. Because, you know, at that age, what are they gonna do, man? And on top of that, he's financially independent, so he doesn't care. So this is true. And so Germans can no longer pretend to themselves that their biggest ally, the United States, did not directly try to destroy their economy because that's what they succeeded in doing with the Nord Stream uh, Terrorist Act, okay? So this was not just the United States carrying out uh, the destruction of Russian property. It was carrying out the destruction of the German economy. Now, in the United States, people are going to be like, maybe shrug their shoulders or like, oh yeah, well, you know, who else could it have been, you know, kind of thing, right? But in Germany, in Europe, this is going to go off like a nuclear bomb. Because really, how else could a German citizen, a German politician, view this destruction of Nord Stream as anything other than an act of war by the United States against the German economy? Already, you are seeing the Germans, they're, they're slowly kind of trying to walk back the, the, um, the, the shipments of tanks to Ukraine, which they were pressured into, that all of Schultz really, he, he, he feels he was double-crossed because he said his condition to sending Leopard 2 tanks to Ukraine was if the Americans sent their M1 tanks. And the Americans said, sure, we'll do it. And then they, after Olaf Scholz started shipping the Leopard 2 tanks or getting ready to ship them, the Americans said, oh yeah, but it's gonna take a while for us to send our M1s, maybe next year or the year after that. I mean, they played Olaf Scholz and apparently Olaf Scholz is furious and Olaf Scholz's political position as Chancellor of Germany is deteriorating. So do you think that Olaf Scholz to hold on to power is not gonna grab onto the story? and make as much political hay out of it as it can? And do you think that this will not affect Germany's view of the United States, and not just Germany, the rest of Europe, and indeed the rest of the war, of the world rather, the rest of the war, or the rest of the world, the rest of the world, and the Germans most especially, are gonna realize that the Americans are willing to sabotage and potentially destroy one of their allies for the sake of pursuing their geopolitical agenda. How do you think the rest of the world is going to feel about that? How do you think Japan, or Australia for instance, is going to feel about the fact that the Americans had no trouble whatsoever throwing Germany under the bus for the sake of somehow hurting the Russian economy? Hmm? Do you think that the Australians or the Japanese are going to be you know, psyched to be first in line as a sacrificial lamb to a Sino-American war come 2025? I think not. I think that they're gonna look at this situation. Not right now, once the, the aftershocks of this, you know, have flown through, but eventually they're gonna start asking themselves, do we want to be thrown under the bus of the Americans as they go after China the way Germany was thrown under the bus? You see my point? This, these revolutions are a disaster. I mean, the, the whole plan to destroy Nord Stream by the Americans was insane because of the political and diplomatic dangers that this entails. The rest of the world is not going to trust the United States at all. And they are not going to be willing to go with the U.S. insofar as a war with China. The United States is isolating itself in a way that will not be able to be repaired for years, perhaps decades. And every single friend, quote unquote, that the Americans have at this point are going to be just smiling at the Americans and trying to figure out a way how to get out from under the thumb and out from the threat of the Americans. Because with friends like the Americans, you know, who needs enemies? Hmm? Look, I can't emphasize this enough. The United States, insofar as its psychotic hatred of Russia, and now of the Chinese, 
has been doing things that are self-destructive to the extreme. See, when you have a conflict, you always want to have friends by your side, real friends. Friends who will really stick with you. But if even your best friends, like the Germans, the Germans are, for all intents and purposes, a vassal state of the United States, and you're willing to destroy them in order to achieve your objective, then soon you will find yourself with no friends or fake friends. Fake friends who will try to get out from under your thumb, or worse, might try at some point to actually hurt you so as to limit the damage that you might inflict on them. That is, turning your own friends into your enemies. And that is actually what is happening with two key countries, Turkey and Saudi Arabia. Turkey has the largest NATO army in Europe. Saudi Arabia is the largest oil producer in the world. And both of these countries are looking at the United States and realizing that the United States has gone insane. They cannot trust the Americans, and they have to figure out a way to get out from under the thumb of the Americans. Figure out a way how to align themselves with the Russians and the Chinese, because for all their faults, the Russians and the Chinese don't try to destroy the infrastructure of friendly countries. Quite the opposite. This is really key, these revelations. Understand what's going on. 